In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the basics of high voltage probes like these two guys here. Uh, what they're made of and uh, typically how you'd use them and a couple of the cautions that you might have to watch out for when using these probes. Uh, these were you know, a lot more popular back uh, before LCD TVs and things like that, uh, mainly for looking at uh, the second anode voltage on the back of a picture tube, but also if you're servicing old uh, you know, CRT based oscilloscopes, you might also have to measure the, um, the voltage on the CRT, uh, and or if you're working with uh, you know, very high power type things, so they can still have some use. Uh, now I've got two different types here. Uh, this first one is a Heath kit. It's a model uh, IM5210 and it's a standalone so you don't need an external meter you just hook up uh, the ground lead to ground and you'd uh, touch uh, the point here to high voltage and you can read directly up to 40 kilovolts so uh, not as common uh, you might not see these around so much more commonly you're going to run across uh, probes like this one here this one is made by RCA but you'll see them made by Fluke and some other folks as well so let's, uh, let's talk about what uh, these things are made of first. A high voltage probe is really nothing more than a, a voltage divider. And uh, where you've got uh, the probe tip here that's connecting up to your high voltage and then ground. And it has a series resistor that is used in conjunction with the impedance of the meter to create a voltage divider. Now the most common is that you'd have a 990 mega ohm resistor here and that the meter, uh, most EMMs, have got a 10 mega ohm input impedance. Now, I'm going to talk about that later. There's a little bit of a gotcha there, so uh, don't, don't go away. So if you, with these two resistors, it's really clear that this is a 100x voltage divider. So that uh, if you've got your meter on a uh, 4 volt scale, then it would make it a 400 volt scale. If it's on a 40 volt scale, it'd be a 4,000 volt scale, that type of a thing. So you basically multiply your meter reading by 100x. Okay, now again, this assumes that you've got a 10 mega ohm input impedance on the meter. We'll talk a little bit about, a little more about that in a moment. Now that series resistor that's buried in the probe is in this part of it here. And uh, I'll actually take this one apart and we'll go take a look at it. Now I'm going to handle it a little bit carefully because you do want that resistor to stay nice and clean. And the reason for that is any contamination on it could cause the resistor to arc over. But you can kind of see the resistor if we if it focuses in here. You can see it's kind of spiraled and uh, this actually has the value written right on it, 990 mega ohms. Um, so that's the series resistor and that's really all that's in the probe. The rest of this is just to kind of keep you safe. Okay. Uh, the insulation around it and uh, the ribs on this thing here just to prevent arcing over. And you want to keep these probes clean again because any oils and dirt from your fingers and things like that uh, could co cause a conductive surface that might arc over and uh, ruin your day. So that's kind of what they're constructed like. Uh, they typically have you know a very heav heavily insulated lead that would then plug into the meter uh, for your positive and negative connections and then a ground lead that you'd hook up to whatever it is that you're testing before you go and measure the high voltage. So that's really very simply what they are but uh, there is a, a couple of cautions that you'd want to be careful of. You know, the one big caution of course is to be sure that before you use this you know make sure it's clean also make sure that the probe is plugged into your meter first before you get anywhere near the high voltage. I always work with one hand. I always say work with one hand in your pocket and one hand on the probe so you don't have a possibility of creating a path through your body. So uh, you know, a couple of just obvious things there. And uh, you know, probably the most important one is common sense that uh, if you're not comfortable working around high voltage, don't do it. Uh, it could really ruin your day. Now one other thing that uh, we mentioned is that these probes generally assume okay that we've got a 10 mega ohm input impedance on the meter. And uh, that's kind of a general assumption that we all make about our meters. But you really have to be careful because that's not always true. And even in the same meter, on some ranges it might be 10 mega ohms and some it's not. Let's take a look at some of the meters I have here and uh, see what they show. 
And so I've got two uh, meters here, a Fluke 87 and a Fluke 79 Series 3. I've got them hooked directly into each other. So what we can do is measure the input impedance of one of the meters um, using the other. So I, if I set the 87 to meet read resistance, all right, and if we take a look, that's showing that um, the Fluke 79 is presenting an 11.1 megaohm resistance, okay, when it's on this scale. So that's not the 10 megaohms that we were assuming. So uh, that means that that voltage divider won't exactly be 100x. It would actually be a little bit larger. So you might measure larger voltages than you would have expected. Now what's interesting is that that input impedance will change as we change the range. So if I go to, to a manual range control, obviously the range hasn't changed here. I'm still on the 4 volt scale. So, but if I hit the range button again, now I'm on the 40 volt scale and my input impedance has dropped to 10.12 mega ohms. If I hit the manual range again to go to the 400 volt scale, now it's closer to 10 mega ohms, 10.01, 10.02. Okay, so uh, and if we cycle back over again, uh, that was the 1000 volt scale. Okay, now that's uh, just about spot on at 10 mega ohms. So uh, we can see that the input impedance varies depending on what range we're in. Now let's see if the 87 does the same thing. So we'll measure, uh, what we'll do is we'll measure, put this guy in volts and put the 79 to measure re resistance. So now this guy is measuring the input impedance of the 87. And again, at, uh, at this scale here, the 4 volt scale, we're at 11 mega ohms. And if we change the range to the next range up, 40 volt scale, we're at 10.08. The 400 volt scale, we're right almost exactly at 10 mega ohms. So you can see the meters behave a little bit differently. They're both from Fluke, okay? But also the input impedance is a function of uh, the meter range. So if you're going to use one of these uh, high voltage probes, you want to be sure that you know what the input impedance is of your meter in the range that you're going to use it. And of course, uh, back before we had uh, nice digital multimeters like these flukes here, uh, most of the meters that were used for doing some of this work were vacuum tube voltmeters. They're the ones that provided the highest uh, input resistance uh, for making measurements. There were uh, meters like uh, the old Simpson 260 that's in the back there that you've seen me use in the past. Analog meters like that um, were basically passive and had what were called a sensitivity, something like you know, 20,000 ohms per volt or 50,000 ohms per volt. So what that meant is that the input resistance varied depending on what scale you put it on. So say for a 20,000 ohms per volt uh, scale, uh, uh, sensitivity, if you put it on the 10 volt scale, it would have an input resistance of 200,000 ohms. And if you increase the scale, it would increase the resistance. So the input resistance of those wasn't fixed. The vacuum tube voltmeters were typically fixed, and it was actually very common for them to have a 11 mega ohm input impedance. Okay. And what you take a look at is, uh, if we look at this box again for the, the meter that we're, or the probe we've been looking at, there's actually a table of different resistors that were available for this particular probe. And uh, in fact, there's even a note down here that says uh, you use the WG206 with standard vacuum tube voltmeters with an 11 mega ohm input resistance. And we can actually see that that particular resistor was 1090 mega ohms. That in series with an 11 mega ohm input resistor would give you the 100x divide ratio. The resistor I've got in this probe is the WG442A, which is 990 mega ohm, and that's typically for use with, you know, your typical 10 mega ohm input impedance uh, devices. So, uh, so you do have to. You know, there was a selection available to you. So the bottom line here is you do have to be a bit careful if you're going to use one of these probes. Uh, you have to be careful about two things. One is what resistor is that probe equipped with, so you know what that series element is uh, that's uh, you know, part of this uh, measurement equation, if you will. And then also you have to worry about what is the input resistance of my meter. And if you're not sure, you really need to go measure it in order to make accurate measurements. So I hope you learned a little something about uh, what high voltage probes are. Uh, a couple of the things you might want to worry about when handling them and keeping them clean, and also some of the precautions that you need to take into account when actually using these probes in order to get accurate results. Thanks again for watching.